Good day to Madam. My name is General and my partner Mo Apina. Both my partner and I will be presenting on the title Gas Chromatography and also Gas Chromatography with Spectrometry. So throughout the presentations, you are going to understand the concepts and theories behind the GC and GCMS as well as identify the advantages, limitations and practical application in real life. Finally, we are going to compare and contrast both identical techniques. In general, gas chromatography is the same as other methods such as FTIR and HPRF, except it's much more cheaper and reliable. To understand the components inside the mixtures, so there are three major sections of the process. First one is injections, where the sample is injected into the injection parts. Second one is the separations, where the sample is separated due to the mass the size and also the velocity of the particles in travel and last one is detection parts where various detectors is used to identify specific components in the mixture so here we show the schematic diagram of the gas chromatography the first part will be at the injection ports second part separation will be at the column and the detection will be at the detector so first of all inert gas is used it can be any gas as long as it inert and is shown in the periodic table last row. And helium gas is used to avoid the gas to react with the sample that we want to identify. So if the sample is reactive, then the impurities will come out after work. So a knot is used to control the pressure and also the flow rate of the helium going into the injection port. So in the injection port, we actually inject the samples. The sample can be in liquid or in gas form. If it is in liquid form, it have to be heated up into vapor form by using the oven inside the injection port. So the thrust from the helium gas will push the sample into the column. So in the column, there are red and also blue particles that you can see here. Big particle obviously, obviously will move much more slower than the small one. So the small will travel first and reach the detector over here. In the detector, various detectors is used such as ionization, thermal, electron capture, nitrogen phosphorus detectors are used in the detectors to identify a specific components of the mixture. So after the detections, it will send to an attenuator the attenuator is actually a controller for the voltage. It lowers out the voltage so that the signal from the detector can synchronize to the computation part. And lastly, we have the charts. So how to read the charts? In the chart, we have y-axis and also x-axis. Y-axis is the intensity. It shows the quantity of the components. And time is basically which one, uh, which components reach first, it will show first. So as you can see, there are three peaks over here. If my sample is an inorganic sample, we have solvent, water, and also other two components. So the lightest water particles will move into the detector first and will show the highest in the detector. The highest peak here is represent the quantity so we can know that solvent water is the highest in the mixtures followed by other two mixtures so the larger the particles the slower it will reach the com the computation part so we will show at the last peak over here okay, today i'll be presenting about gas chromatography mass spectrometry also known as dcms for short so this technique is basically the combination of two analytical techniques which are gas chromatograph and mass spectrometer. So gas chromatograph is used to separate components in a sample while mass spectrometer is used to identify the components in a sample. So when you combine these two techniques together, that's where you get this function to separate and identify the components in a sample. Now as you can see from the slide, the basic process is very short. I actually summarized the whole methodology uh, to make it easy to understand. So I highlight the important points, but I will explain the process in detail in the upcoming slide. So this is a schematic diagram of GCMS. The first half is the gas chromatograph and the second half is the mass spectrometer. 
So the gas chromatograph that is used in this technique is the same as the gas chromatograph that is explained. Uh, it was explained in the previous topic. So the basic, the working principle and the process is the same for gas chromatograph. The only difference with this technique is that the addition of mass spectrometer. So when I explain, I'm only going to summarize the GC part. I'm going to focus more on the mass spectrometer. So how this method works is that it begins with the gas chromatograph. So the sample that you analyze is vaporized and separated as it travels through the capillary column. And once it leaves the gas chromatograph, it will flow into the mass spectrometer where it enters ionization source. So this is the place where the component is ionized. Um, there are three methods for them to be ionized, either to electron ionization, chemical ionization, or desorption technique. And once it becomes charged ions, it will be accelerated and sent to the mass analyzer. So this is the place where the ions are separated according to its mass to charge ratio. And how it's separated depends on the type of analyzer used. Most, common, most commonly is the quadrupole and ion traps. So once the ions are separated, it's sent to the detector um, to be quantified and identified. And, and then the detector will send data to the computer and the computer will record the data and um, transfer it to a uh, visual display. So most commonly is the mass spectrum. This one is um, a type of graphical representation for the mass spectrometer. So mass spectrum is basically the graph of ion abundance against mass to charge ratio. Another type is the photo ion chromatogram. Okay, next is the comparison between GC and GCMS. So I'm only gonna, in this part, I'm only gonna highlight the main difference between these two techniques since um, it should have been explained earlier, the functions and advantages and everything. So one, in terms of function, the main difference is uh, for GC, it's used for separation, but for GCMS, it can separate and also identify the components in the sample. Actually, gas, um, GC itself, it has a detector, its own detector, but when it's coupled with uh, mass spectrometry, it's more efficient and it can even identify, it's able to identify the components in the sample as compared to GC alone. Now, in terms of the advantage, it actually has similar advantages, but uh, GCMS have higher sensitivity than GC itself for complex compounds that are difficult to analyze. And also, the major difference is that uh, GCMS can detect and identify non-target components. Um, this is something that GC cannot do. So, for in terms of limitation, uh, because GCMS is a combination of two techniques, so if there is improper condition in GC, it can cause contamination. But for um, GC itself, it doesn't have this. Uh, limitation. Then another one is um, for the CMS, if there is derivatization, then it can mask the result, but GC doesn't have this. So in terms of application, there are actually, both techniques are actually used in the same field, but it has different usage. So although it has, it's used in the same industry, but how the techniques are used is different. So in conclusion, gas chromatography and mass spectrometry are actually powerful, both great analytical tools in the world of science. So they have separate yet significant usage. And although individually they are great analytical tools, but there are limitations to its usage. That's why scientists and chemists find ways to couple uh, one technique to another to form a more efficient device to enhance the capability of the uh, method. Uh, so this process is called the happen independent for example GCMS. So depending on the application, individually uh, the technique has uh, great efficiency itself in the industry that they are using. But when it's coupled to another technique, it has um, greater efficiency, greater capability with wider usage and less limitation. Okay, that's all from me. Thank you.